when is my manifestation going to show up? Really, when is it going to show up? People ask that all the time. And then I typically tell people three to six months is when their manifestation is going to show up, especially when it comes to a specific person. And they say, why? You have to learn a new way of doing something. And because you are learning a new way of doing something, it takes time for it to become natural. So it shows up when you naturally think from the end. But like an actor, you take time to be able to naturally think. You just can't walk into a part, show up on the set on the very first day, be handed a script and perfectly perform that character. And if you are playing that character for 15 years, that character is a part of you. And that character is your identity. So when it shows up is when your identity becomes that version of you that gets this desire. How can you become that version of you to get that desire? Let's talk about that today. This is Susie, your beautiful millionaire swan queen. Welcome back to the garden of my beautiful duckling. Thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing my videos. I love you. I am the best life coach. I have a 99.6% success rate in getting people back together with the love of their life. It's not the only thing I do. So if you are interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, joining my paid Facebook group, upscaling your money with Delivery Dawn, the links are in the description below. I am going to preface this the new identity. If you are one of those people who love self-love, self-concept, and you are doing it for yourself, that is fantastic. It is incredible. It's not going to get you the money, the job, the car, the house, the love of your life. It's not going to magically make your children do their chores. Self-love and self-concept is for your Self, to make you feel good so for all of those things I just mentioned you don't need to do it you change your identity so you are the person who is struggling to get what they want so you're over here and you're struggling to get what you want and you want to be the person over here who gets everything they want so we're gonna use Jared and Jason so you're in Jared you're working to change you to a better version. And this is why I dislike self-love and self-concept because we see it all over the place where people go, I'm doing self-concept and my SP came back. And then somebody else is like, I've been doing self-concept for six months and I'm not getting anything. Their story is I worked on myself, I got my desire. So they're opening up their story with, oh, I'm doing this and I got that, is how they close it. And that's all conscious creation is. Because I truly hate the word manifesting. Because manifesting means that if they walk out the door, if they go to the grocery store, if they go to work, if they go to hang with their buddies or their girlfriends, we have to manifest them back now. We have to create absolutely everything they do in their reality. I don't want to live like that. So I create my life and I give people the free will to do nice things for me because people always do nice things for me. They spoil me. <clears throat> I've been saying, why am I spoiled for over 1500 days? I don't have to tell somebody what my favorite drink is because somebody will go, what do you want to drink? And somebody else will automatically answer that. I don't have to tell people that I am allergic to pickles. It's automatic. 
in my circle. If I'm ordering something, somebody will say, are you sure there's no pickles on this item? Because she's allergic to pickles. I have to argue with people about a pickle allergy, which is ridiculous. But the people around me won't let me eat pickles because of my allergy. That is what you want in your reality. You want people surrounding you that support you. So you have to change your identity to you are supported. You are spoiled. People are always being nice to you. People do wonderful things for you. This isn't a self concept. It's a relationship concept. Your relationship with your specific person. That's all you have to change. Your relationship with your best friend is the perfect example. You are meeting your best friend for Taco Tuesday. I know it's Friday, but you're meeting your friend for Taco Tuesday. You're not gonna blow up your friend's phone. You're not gonna blow up your best friend and be like, hey, are we still meeting? Saturday, you, we still gonna go to Taco Tuesday? Sunday, Taco Tuesday. Monday, Taco Tuesday. Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. Oh my God, she's not answering my phone. Is she still gonna show up at the restaurant for Taco Tuesday? We're not gonna do that to our best friend because our relationship with our best friend is natural. It's so natural that we shoot her a text and we go, mm, she didn't respond, oh well. I'll talk to her later. It's no big deal. I haven't heard from this person in a couple of days. It's no big deal. Hey, when's the last time you talked to your best friend? Oh, a couple of days ago. Yo, you guys fighting? No, we just haven't talked in a couple of days. That's how your relationship with money and your specific person needs to be. It needs to be so natural that you know. So now when you go to the restaurant on Tuesday to get your tacos, she's already sitting there. He's already sitting at the table. Literally, they're already at the table. They've already got the margaritas ordered and the margaritas are sitting on the table with them at that table. And you walk in, you sit down and you're like, oh my gosh, girl, I've had a week from. Oh, wait until I tell you what my specific person did. And she tells you what her specific person did. And you all gossip. And you have a great time. And then you go to Newark the next day and people go, how? How was your night last night? Oh, it was great. Me and my bestie got together. We had tacos and margaritas and we just cackled like a bunch of hens. Done. We don't disrespect them. We don't talk bad about them. We actually praise our relationship. And when somebody says, you know, I don't like the way they treat you. You're like, um, that's my best friend. That person's been in my life longer than you are. You want to disrespect my best friend? We can't talk anymore. And we will literally cut you off. Now, it doesn't matter if your best friend is a guy or a girl. It doesn't matter if you're a girl and your best friend is a guy. It doesn't matter if you're a guy and your best friend is a girl. They're your best friend. And if you've been best friends longer than with that person than you have with your specific person, your specific person's got to accept that that's a three-way partnership. You're going to screenshot and send everything to your best friend. So he texts you, hey ladies, and you respond back, ladies, what, what are you talking about? And he texts back, well, you screenshot and send to your best friend. So I was just saying, hey ladies, you're going to screenshot that and send it to your best friend. He does something stupid, you're going to send it to your best friend. And that's how your relationship is. But when you bring this person in that you want to marry, that you want to spend your life with, we don't do that. So we have to change that part of you, the identity to the new. So we use your best friend as the face. Taco Tuesday with your best friend. You might not even remind her, but you know she'll be there. 
you have 100% certainty that that person is going to be there. The money, are you sure it's gonna be there? The love, are you sure it's gonna be there? Because changing your crappy thinking isn't what you gotta do. You can have bad thoughts. You don't have to heal all of your wounds. You don't have to be perfect. I saw that question. This person has a great romantic relationship, but they talk behind everybody's back. They're not a nice person. I thought you had to be love in order to have a great relationship. No, you changed the identity of your relationship to great. And you took something that is great in your life and you magnified it over here with a new story to be able to get what you want. So Jared isn't conforming. He's not doing what you want. You know, guys, again, just a little tidbit. Jared and Jason are the names I use because I'm a girl and that's where I go. So Jared isn't conforming. He's not doing what you want him to do. So you're recreating everything about him. Now we have unconditional love. Oh, that's going to mess you up too because unconditional love says that I love you unconditionally. Well, unconditional love doesn't have healthy boundaries. It means you can be the douchebag and I'm going to accept your behavior. But we don't want him to be like that. So we're going to go for healthy love. So we're going to normalize healthy love. So what does healthy love look like to you? Respect, appreciation, present, honest, faithful, uh, supportive, compassionate. So those are my automatic given. So I'm not going to put up with somebody who cheats on me. I'm not going to put up with somebody who disrespects me. I'm not going to put up with somebody who disrespects my children or my friends. Like I have crazy friends. I know I have crazy friends, but I'm not going to go down that. You don't disrespect my friends. It's just no. And my children don't even think about it. So I take out my piece of paper. I get my trusty little pen. It's probably in the color purple. And I write down all the characteristics and qualities I want. So those are the, the main ones, the faithful, trustworthy, honest, present, supportive. But what are the other qualities that are going to make your day better? So you have your thing. I want somebody who's serious because I'm a serious person, but I need somebody who's funny. So we're going to take Jared and we're going to make Jared into Jason, who is, can be serious and extremely funny. It's got to make me laugh. Like my job is like, I love my job. 99% of the time I love my job. Some days though, I just want to curl under the covers, but helping people to change their relationships can be very stressful at times. It can be very rewarding at times. So I need somebody when I've had a bad day, especially that is really going to make me laugh. And I mean, I'm talking so hard that I'm almost going to pee my pants. I want somebody who's going to make me laugh because people who play together stay together. So if we're playing together, we're staying together. If we're laughing and joking, we're happy. But if there's a situation where we need to be serious, like, you know, bills got to be paid, cars, oil's got to be changed in the car. I, I, I'm still taking applications for that honey do list um, that needs to be done. Because uh, <clears throat> my oil needs to be changed probably has for a while now. So serious, babe, you got to go change your oil. Or better yet, he does it for me because he takes that little responsibility. I hate doing the dishes. I hate doing the dishes. I always feel like I'm stuck with the kitchen, but I will do laundry. I don't care about the laundry. I will do the laundry. So you do the kitchen, I'll do the laundry. I like deals like that. So these go in my qualities. He loves to do the dishes because I hate doing the dishes. See where I'm going? 
I don't just want you to be, he has to be honest and trustworthy and faithful. I want you to create your Jared into this beautiful character that's going to want you to stay with them for the next 50 years. I don't want to spend 18,262 days with somebody that doesn't add zest, value, fun to my life. And this is what I mean by value. What are your deal breakers? Because if you don't know what you do want, we know exactly what we don't want. So you don't want somebody who's going to yell at you. So you want somebody who is always going to speak to you in a kind, loving way. You don't want somebody who is going to belittle you because you have anxiety, PTSD, you are just stressed. So you want somebody who is going to support you. You want somebody who's going to be a, a liar that's easy, that's honest. So you could take and, and put over here what you want. Is there a character on TV or in the movies that you like? Okay, so we all know I'm a Dean girl. Love Dean. But Dean, mm, he's got some issues. He's got some anger issues. Definitely got PTSD. So do you want your person to be like Dean? Dean will go to the end of the earth to find Sammy. Do you want your person to be like Lucifer? Lucifer loves Chloe so much, but he messes everything up in getting Chloe. Do you want your person to be like Amenadiel, Lucifer's brother? Do you want your person to be like Dr. Linda? Do you want him to be like Chloe? Because you could take your favorite character and the things that you love about that character you can put on that list of qualities and traits. So we're changing your identity of the way you see them. So you identify everyone is you pushed out. Another thing that I hate, they're abusive somewhere. No, no, we're not going to go down that lane. You don't create everything. Everybody is not you pushed out. Take away that responsibility because if you have to create everything and everybody is you pushed out, that means every time you have a conversation with that person, every time that person texts you, every time that person does something, you have to script it. And I mean script it to the details. You can't just get into a boxing ring and wing it when you are filming a movie. You actually have to sit down and write out every step that you take and every step that the other person takes. Sylvester Stallone had to do that when he was doing Rocky. Carl Weather said, how are we going to do this? And he said, well, we'll just wing it. And he's like, no, man, we can't wing it. So he had to get out of the ring and write the boxing scene. You don't want to constantly have to step out of the ring and write something. You want to be in the ring. That's why we changed the identity. So now this person does all of these things that you like. So we're just going to go with Jared and Jason. So Jason does all of these things that you like. This is how easy it is to change the thing. Get a diary, get a note on your phone. Every time your specific person does something you like, write it down write it down and you can write it down as a letter to them. So you get that first page of your thing and you're like, dear diary, I saw my specific person today at the gas station. And when he turned around and looked at me, I could see in his eyes that he loves me. We talked, it was a very wonderful conversation. And he said he would text me later just really simple. He looked at you, you liked that, you talked, it was a pleasant conversation, and he was going to text you later. Later on in the diary, you'd see uh, next day, he texted me. 
Dear Diary, my specific person texted me. Oh my gosh, it wasn't a sub sex. It was good morning, beautiful. I was like, wow, that was so wonderful that you texted me good morning, beautiful. We chatted on and off all day. It made me feel spoiled. It made me feel loved. It was so nice. Because now you're writing this down and you are shifting you to see them do what you want. So you have your qualities, you have your traits. Now, if they do a quality that you really like of uh, this specific person, um, write in the diary. Oh my God, I saw this quality come out of them. It was wonderful. Because you are seeing your person as we do it in 3D and you're trying to bring your person and your relationship to 5D, but that's not true. You're in 5D and you are living your relationship in 5D and you are changing it. Congratulations, I'm so proud of you. You need to bring 5D down into 3D. So the bridge of incidents, I'm gonna explain this a little differently. We all think of a bridge this way, okay? This is 3D, but 5D is up here. So we need a staircase that brings us down or a slide. So if it's a slide, it can come in faster than if you come down a staircase. But even on a staircase, you go up and down the steps. So you see things that you like and you go down. You see things you don't like, you go back up. Well, we're gonna use a slide for an analogy. This is what manifesting is. You slide down the slide and you connect in a perfect touch. Everything's great, everything's wonderful. Well, you see something and you kinda lose your footing and you go whoop. So you go whoop. So you're sliding back and forth. And here's your specific person. So you're sliding back and forth. We want to make sure that that slide goes to them. And the only way it stays here with them is by talking wonderful about the relationship. And this is why you don't have to heal anything. This is why you don't have to do anything except change the way you identify with this relationship. So you're now seeing because of what you wrote down all of the wonderful things they do, all the wonderful things they say, all the characteristics and qualities that you wanted them to have, you're writing down every time you see them. That's changing the way you see this. So you're sliding into them and staying. The more you do this, the more you continue to do this, it's going to stay. So now what happens if your specific person finds this diary? You wrote all these wonderful things about them. They're not gonna be upset because they're gonna look at this and they're gonna go, oh my gosh, look, this person is like really working to see my good qualities and traits. But you never, ever want to write in that diary anything you don't want them to see. So they ghosted you. They, uh, gotta do it. Gotta do it. I tried not to. I still think they died. They're ignoring you. They are mistreating you. They're with a third party. None of this goes in that diary because that is what's keeping you in this slide. That's what's keeping you. So you only want the good things because the good things slide you to them. The bad things take you away. And now you have to back up to come back in for your landing. And I, to get off of this slide, you focus on the good. And that's it. That's all it is. So your person is with the third party. 
and you are constantly telling everybody about the third party. You just missed them. Your person is single and they're not showing up for you because they're going out with their friends. They're going to bars. They're going to parties. They're going to the gym. They're going to the bowling alley. They're going on trips all the time and you're complaining about what they're doing, you're sliding right past them. And because you're sliding right past them, you can't see that they love you. So this diary teaches you to see that they love you. It's teaching you to focus on the good. If you don't want to write it in a diary, how about this jar? Get a jar and a bunch of little pieces of paper and every time they do something you like, write it down and put it in the jar. Because that jar starts to fill up, you start seeing the good things. You can start with just an empty bottle of water or pop, or you could get the big, huge five gallon water bottle that you flip over on the cooler and you can use that. That's a lot to fill up. And if your goal is focusing on filling up this container with the wonderful things that your specific person does for you, you can start that before you're even back together. He never texts me sup. What you doing? He always texts me, good morning, hello. He would respond to my text messages really quickly. Those are good qualities. Put it in there. He gave me a cute little nickname and I like the nickname. Put it in there. He always remembered my favorite drink and snack. So when we would watch a movie, he made sure to have those handy. Put it in there. I'd go to his house and he'd have my favorite snack and drink in his house. Put it in there. So there are things that they did that you liked. Start putting it in there. And that is helping you to slide down. It is helping you to focus. It's just as easy to focus on the good as the bad. The reason most people find it difficult to focus on the good is because it's not as entertaining. We entertain ourselves with bad stories. Think about our TV shows that we watch. Sam and Dean were really toxic. Lucifer's toxic. Amenadiel is toxic. And Amenadiel is an angel and Lucifer is the devil. But Amenadiel is just as toxic as Lucifer. Those Focused qualities entertain us. And we need to break the cycle of being entertained by the bad. That person that's always going on trips, always getting a new car every couple of years, always talking about how great their life is going. We don't want to hear it because our life doesn't match theirs. But their life is that way because they're always talking about the wonderful things that they're doing. My daughter has a friend and her and her husband love to travel and they just got back from Dallas. Before Dallas, they were somewhere else. Before that, they were somewhere else. Her bonuses from work, she lives to travel. So that's what they do. And these vacations are planned out. My daughter's sister-in-law was just down. And while she was here, she booked the hotel for December and she booked the rental car for December. So she's going to come back around Christmas time. She's already booked what she's going to do. And then she does this neat little thing. She buys gift cards. So for the next six months, she'll go buy gift cards. She'll buy gift cards to Starbucks, Applebee's, Red Lobster, Logan's, 
uh, Texas Roadhouse, Olive Garden. So when she's on vacation, she uses those gift cards to eat out. So you want to go to Applebee's, she's got gift cards. So those gift cards are how she eats out when she goes on vacation. So when she gets paid, she goes to Sam's and she buys a gift card. And she buys like the $50 gift cards. So you are looking at things that are good, but she's working smarter, not harder. She's not worried that she has to save the money to be able to eat out on vacation because she has the gift cards. What things do you do like that? That are genius. We have those qualities and traits we love about our specific person. Do those things now so that you're sliding in that 5D to 3D. Because in order to go to 5D, that's the, the spiritual plane, the one consciousness, we have to leave 3D. And the only way we leave 3D is to die. So changing your identity is just changing the way you see the person. So you can still talk bad about everybody else. They could be your hobby. I don't care. But you can't talk bad about your relationship. You can't talk bad about your person. You don't let anybody talk bad about your best friend. You're not going to let anybody talk bad about your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife. So when you do that, you change. He's not acting this way because you created it. She's not acting this way because she's you pushed out. They're not doing this because you don't have enough self-love or self-concept. They're doing this because you have a million reasons to back up what they're doing. Now you have to create a million reasons for them to do the other thing. So that's where stupid, silly answers come in to play. Where you do a phrase, a question, or a statement, and you answer it with because something. So why is your specific person always communicating with you on a daily basis? Because Susie said so. Why is your specific person always communicating with you on a daily basis? Because he never texted me sup. Something he did. Now you can use a personal thing that that person did because you have things that you put in your jar that you love about him. So we know Dean always answered his phone. We know Dean would always go find Sammy. So if I'm dating Dean Winchester, he always has a cell phone on him. He's always answering his phone because it might be dad. He's always answering his phone because he has to know where Sammy is because it's his job to take care of Sammy. This is where I want you to think in your reality. So what really happens is you guys give a reason why this is going on. I did self-love, my person showed up. I worked on my self-concept, my person showed up. They said what they did and they gave a reason. And the more reasons you can give why this is true, this is what my bodybuilder friend taught me, well, why do you love me? Because I'm drinking Diet Dr. Pepper out of a wine glass. Why do you love me? Because I'm going to let you have the remote. Why do you love me? Because I give you a heads up and I pin it in the comments for you guys headset users when chance 
you know, is a little loud, or I've even been doing it with the ambulances. I'm giving you reasons. Why do you love me? Because I'm showing you how to easily change your life for the better. I can give you reasons. And the more reasons I give you, that's when you show up because you cannot fight logic. So when love comes into play, logic and reason goes out the window. Manifesting taught you to bring logic and reason back into the situation. So I'm using love, which should not be logical. And I am giving you logical reasons why this person loves you. Why this person wants to be in a relationship with you. And it takes time to build a million reasons. Now, where do I come up with a million? Neville Goddard says if a million people need to move in order for you to get your end goal, your desired goal, then those million people have to move. But I don't want to have to control those million people. So I just keep giving my reasons why this goes my way, why I get everything I want, why my specific person does whatever I desire. So if I desire a text message, I can put in there, oh, you know, he's always got his phone in his hand. That's why he texts me every day. I don't mess with texts. I go for communication and communication is face to face in person, face to face over video chat, audio calls, text messages, emails, text messages can be WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, your actual physical phone number, uh, any of the other things. I mean, I have like eight different ways people communicate with me, but that's how you get to change your identity. That's how you get out of the state of nothing's working with Jared to the state. I'm in this absolutely positively amazing relationship with Jason and life is wonderful with him. And you don't have to clean up anything. You just changed your story because you wrote down all the reasons that Jared, the old story, to create the new story of the good. And you let go of all the bad traits, the bad qualities, the bad characteristics of what they were doing because you just focused on the good. That's all this is. Creating your reality is just focusing on what you want. So you want that car, focus on how you get the car. You want that million dollars in your bank account, focus on how you get the million. You want that specific person, Stop saying you live in different states, different countries. You um, have a religious problem uh, because they're one religion, you're another. Uh, there's a third party. When you focus on this, it stays in the Jared. But when you focus on all the good, it becomes Jason. Think about that because manifesting really is this simple. I love you guys. Have an absolutely positively amazing day. And as always, leave me a comment. Let me know how I am drastically changing your life for the better. Will my clicker work is the big question. Uh, not yet. <laughs>